Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, uh, do you remember a name, Lyndon Baines Johnson? I Were you so. even alive when he was president of the United States? Let's just continue on. Okay, well, let me tell you a little <laughs> bit about Lyndon Baines Johnson, because it was an interesting period of time. The 1960s is when he was president, and a lot of things happened during his presidency that you may not actually be aware of. One is public broadcasting. Okay. It was during his administration that that came into being. Also, Medicare, Medicaid, the war on poverty, and unfortunately, escalation of the war in Vietnam, mm. which we can just overlook for now. But the for other this conversation. thing about Lyndon Baines Johnson, and I'm sure you don't remember this, is he had his gallbladder out while he was president. And one of the most famous uh, photos of any president was exactly, and Dr. Kopetsky has it, he lifted up his shirt and showed everybody in the world his gallbladder scar, which of course was about a foot long. <laughs> and now, you know, most of the time, they take out the gallbladder through a teeny little hole. So Lyndon Baines Johnson, an interesting character. But there's one other thing that Lyndon Baines Johnson did that you also may not be aware of, and that is that he designated February as American Heart Month. I didn't know that either. Everything you wanted to know about LBJ. According to the American Heart Association, half of all Americans have at least one major risk factor for heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer in this country, and it has been for a long time, but we've been doing better. Until last year. Ooh. Last year, the number of Americans who died of heart disease went up for the first time in a decade. So why have we stalled in the fight against heart disease? Here to tell us is Mayo Clinic Heart Specialist, Dr. Stephen Kopetsky. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Kopetsky. It's good to see you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Tom. Dr. Kopetsky, you've been on the program so many times over so many years, and it's almost always good news when it comes to heart disease, but not this year. Right. This year, we've taken a downturn, unfortunately. Now, about 10 years ago, you know, the, uh, the number th one, two, and three causes of death uh, for heart disease is the number one cause, but the way it, it happens is too much smoking, too much eating, not enough physical activity. About 10 years ago, the CDC said that in about 10 years, we're going to see not enough physical activity and poor eating habits overtake smoking as the number one cause. And that's and what's happened. Guess what we're finding. Wow. That's what we well, found. Well, they, they predicted pretty well, didn't they? They did. They're maybe off by a year, but, you know, it's not too bad. <laughs> so the smoking rate, what is it, 19 20% now of About American that. smoke? About that. But uh, the inactivity le level has increased, as has, and, and our diet's no good well, for a lot know, of people. We have, I actually have a job where people pay me to sit all day, <laughs> unfortunately, and we don't be active. And then if you look at the eating habits of adults in America, uh, about 95% of us don't eat appropriately. But look at the kids, 99.9% .9 do not eat appropriately. Really? So yeah. it's getting worse? It's getting worse. Uh, well, how about our educational efforts? What's happened there? We, we needed it. That Lyndon Baines Johnson to come up with some education well, program on diet. Well, our message is still the same we had when LBJ was president in the, the mid-60s. You know, don't eat too much, get a lot of exercise, don't smoke, lose weight, you know, et cetera. Watch your blood pressure. Watch your cholesterol. It's the same message for 60 years, and it didn't work then, and it hasn't worked now. Why? Well, I think we've heard it too often. I mean, has anyone ever heard, don't smoke, it's bad for your heart? <laughs> you, know, we've all, you know, we've all heard that. And when I talk to patients about eating, I'll say, uh, you know, uh, let me talk to you about eating for a while. They, they cross their arms like this, and they kind of look at the ceiling. You know, they, they don't want to hear about it. Yeah. Really, they sort of turn you off. They well, don't want to hear it. Well, I did find once if I ask them about activity, physical activity, uh, I can say, Do you, should I talk to you about exercise, or should I talk to you about vigorous leisure activity? I did 10 patients one day. All 10 of them said, vigorous leisure activity. Tell me about that. <laughs> Until I told them what it was, they said, that sounds like exercise. <laughs> you just got to trick yourself. That's right. Well, it doesn't make sense to me, though, because you see so many people out walking. You see so many people at the Dan Abraham Healthy Living Center. The, the athletic club is, is packed. The, every, every facility we have here in Rochester, it seems to me there's a lot of people exercising. Yes, if you go to one of these great health facilities you just talked about, Tom, look at the people there. We all tend to go at the same time. Some of us go at 5 a.m., some go right after work, some go over lunch. But look at the people. You'll see the same people over and over and over again. And then look at the people that you don't see there. And they, you know, they may be there for a couple of weeks. But you know what the average date uh, of the year, of the 365 year, when you uh, do your New Year's resolutions, you know the mm -hmm. average date we give them up? 
January 17th. Oh, my goodness. That's about when I start going to the gym again. I take the first, I do, I take the first couple of weeks off because you just can't get in anywhere at See, the gym. See, it gets so less I, crowded. I take it off, and then I start back up again. So I'm on my Smart. vacation. Smart. <laughs> you go on the 17th. Yeah, that's, that's right. Start, I, that's huh? what I do. All right, so we know that, uh, we mentioned at the beginning, that 50% of us, 50% of adult Americans have at least one risk factor, major risk factor for heart disease. So what are those? Well, the big risk factors we've always thought about are um, your cholesterol, your smoking, certainly your blood pressure, uh, your genes, the family history, things we can't change, and then things like diabetes. One thing we don't ask about much, though, is your physical activity mm -hmm. and how fit you are. Mm -hmm. And there's been recent articles written that that's the forgotten risk factor because we can all get in better shape in just a few days, a few weeks. In fact, there are many studies that show doing vigorous interval activity three or four minutes, three or four times a week for 12 weeks will increase your fitness by 20%. Now, Tracy, if I said, listen, I would like you to increase your total financial worth by 20% <laughs> in 12 weeks, you'd say, how do I do it? I'll Let me do sign it. Sign me up. <laughs> sign me up. But you can increase your fitness in by 20% in just 12 weeks with a few minutes a, a day for three days a week as compared to an hour a day of just regular walking. So yeah, let's just go, let's say people are walking, we'll make it this as easy as possible. Right. If you're walking, what should you do to increase that heart benefit? Well, if you're walking outside, find a tree, a post, a sign, and say I'm gonna walk real fast towards that, as okay. fast as I can. And so fast that I'm gonna say to myself, this is really hard, I mm -hmm. can't keep this up. Then when you get really tired, slow down, get your breath back, and then do it again. Those okay. are called intervals. Okay. And, and so and for that, sorry. I'm just going to say, and for 30 seconds, you want to be doing that as fast as you can? At least 30 seconds, two minutes Okay. Good. All right. And that's as good as doing a, an hour's worth of a regular walking. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm saying if you do really intense for 30 seconds, I mean, you just go all out. And that's not for everybody, of course. But it's for young, healthy guys like you, Tom. You can do that. <laughs> but go sure all I out can. for 30 seconds. Uh, do it three times and do that uh, you know, at a, at a time and then do it three times a week. That's been shown to be as effective as getting you in shape as doing an hour of walking three times a week. I, I was going to do that, but I couldn't find a tree. <laughs> 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 That's critical, isn't it? That's well, a critical part of it. you got to have the quit, the quit spot up there on the horizon. <laughs> exactly. Cholesterol. Uh, you mentioned that as a significant risk factor. So explain to us uh, total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, triglycerides. Uh, give us a little refresher course on it's that. It's alphabet and, uh, soup. The, uh, the thing is, remember that HDL is the high-density lipoprotein. HDL, you want that to be high. That's the good stuff. Good fat, the good, good fat, cholesterol. The good cholesterol. And we all have, every cell in our body has cholesterol in it. If we didn't have it, we would die. So every cell has it. The low density lipoprotein, you want that to be very low. That's the bad cholesterol that clogs up the arteries. The, the lousy, mm -hmm. the lousy mm -hmm. DL. Lousy, <laughs> perfect. The triglycerides are the things that go up and down almost daily within hours. They go down when you are active physically. They go up when you eat some carbohydrates and too many calories. All right, so we've got that all figured out. And and ideal level of cholesterol, are most tests the, the same around the country? I mean, isn't it less than 200 milligrams for whatever it is, deciliter? That's, that's normal? That's good? That's normal. That's not normal. It's not good, but it's average. All right, so you want it as low as possible. You'd like as low as possible. I have a lot of patients come in to me and say, gee, doctor, my LDL is 120. I've been told it's fine. I've been told it's normal. So it's not fine, it's not normal, but it's average. What's the average man, 60-year-old man in this country have his cholesterol when he has a heart attack? About 120, his mm -hmm. bad cholesterol. When we come back, we're going to talk to Dr. Kopetsky about the diagnosis of heart disease, how you find out if you're something wrong with your ticker, and also prevention. When we come back, myth or matter of fact, if you take a statin, you can eat whatever you want. Oh, sounds good to me. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Our guest is heart specialist, cardiologist, Dr. Stephen Kopetsky of the Mayo Clinic. We've been talking about the incidence of heart disease, the risk factors for heart disease, and just recently we talked about cholesterol and we got the, the cliff notes on cholesterol. So everybody understands that now, myth or matter of fact. Yeah, well, let's, we'll talk about statins next. So myth or matter of fact, if I'm taking a statin, I can eat whatever I want. 
What a myth. <laughs> what a myth. It kind of gives it away when you say whatever I want. It doesn't yes. include donuts. No, I'm sorry. It does not. But if the, a recent study showed that if you are taking a statin and you are eating whatever you want, which is about 40% of the population, you really get, get no benefit of the, from the statin. All right. So it's important for our audience to, to know that a statins are to lower your cholesterol. So uh, when do you decide? I know there are several different statins out there. Isn't it the, the, the number one prescribed drug in this country now? Yes. Or pretty close. It used and, to be Valium, but you yeah. know, that's down to those anti-anxiety medications. They are. To be number two, but statin's number one, right? And the last statin just went generic about uh, three weeks ago. So, in other words, it's uh, much less expensive than it used to be. Correct. All right, so who takes a statin? Who should take a statin? Well, certainly if you have disease, if you have a heart attack, if you have any uh, signs of disease, like a narrowing of one of your arteries that your doctor may hear on a physical exam, that's worth it. If you have a lot of risk factors, like if you're a diabetic, you have high blood pressure, or you're an elderly man in this country over age 60, you should, odds are you may be benefited by a statin. The third group is the patients that have genetic reasons for high cholesterol, and that's a different group, but they clearly need to be on a statin. Is it true that most cardiologists believe that there is no such thing as too low a cholesterol? So even if you were in the normal range, it, it might not hurt you and might be good for you to take a statin? Well, to put things in perspective, when you're born, your bad cholesterol is about 50. When you have your first heart attack, it's about 120. <laughs> We've done things to our body that isn't good. Recent studies have shown that uh, cholesterol's below, uh, bad cholesterol is below 70. You get regression. The arteries start to open up. And that benefits a dose-response curve until it's at least about 20. And, and really, that's what statins do, right? They lower bad, lousy cholesterol, Correct. right? That's right. I mean, and, and thereby they lower total cholesterol? They lower total cholesterol. They lower bad cholesterol. They don't do much for triglycerides. They don't do much for the good or the HDL cholesterol. So why, isn't, uh, why aren't we putting statins in the water? Well, there's a lot of people that don't want to take statins. There are side effects. Muscle aches, you can get those with them. There's some uh, people that have thought they've had memory problems. That's never really borne out. Uh, diabetes may be a little more likely. However, the only people that become diabetic are the ones that were going to be diabetic anyway. Mm. Uh. And they get diabetes about two months earlier on the statin than not. How is heart, di uh, how is heart disease diagnosed? Well, the unfortunately, half of all diagnoses are the first symptom is a heart attack. Really? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, let me, let me just interject here. Isn't it also true that at least 50% of the people who come into the emergency room with a heart attack have diabetes? Uh, it's getting to be that way because yeah, that's almost close. almost the number in our country now. Yeah, okay. Sorry, go ahead. No, but half the people, that their first symptom is a heart attack. But unfortunately, those folks, it's probably because if we did an angiogram, took pictures of their arteries, our angio means artery, gram means picture. The day arteries that supply the heart. Supply the heart. If we took an angiogram the day before the heart attack, we would say, don't worry, there's no, no bad narrowing there. So it's not a, a narrowing that just slowly occurs over time. It's one that all of a sudden, boom, you get a tear of the lining of the artery, a blood clot forms like a cork in a bottle and closes it off. So you can't, that, I've never known that before. The day before, you can't run a test and see that it's complete, it'll look completely fine. It's not like having a baby where you can figure it out. Wow. Yeah. Well, it, it, that test wouldn't, wouldn't be very predictive, but there are, are ways that you can examine someone, do some other tests, and predict, give them a pretty good idea of what their chances of having a heart attack are, right? Or over, having heart disease? Over time, over yeah. 10 years, you can't say, okay, next week, tomorrow, something like that. All right, so let's talk about prevention. Uh, obviously, uh, physical activity is important. Um, diet, and, and when, you, when you talk about that, when you sit down and talk to your patients about diet and what you ought to be eating, what do you tell them? What, what do you recommend? Well, the, the studies that have over and over and over again been shown to be beneficial is the, what we call the Mediterranean diet, more of a Mediterranean lifestyle. Buy fresh foods. You know, over 56% of the calories we eat in this country is processed foods, unfortunately. Try to get fresh fruits. Try to get more fruits and vegetables. Try to get maybe only three ounces of red meat a day, which is a deck of cards. Uh, try to increase uh, your uh, olive oil consumption or monounsaturated fats like olive oil, avocado oil, nuts, things like that. Those studies have shown to reduce heart attacks, stroke, Alzheimer's, erectile dysfunction, uh, 
Parkinson's disease. Well, now you're talking Arth about some important arthritis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, put that erectile dysfunction at the top of that list. You, maybe more actually, people yeah, maybe pay that attention. Would, that would help. Yeah. And the first diet shown to reduce female sexual dysfunction. Uh, sugar. Well, really? Sugar okay. is uh, one of the things that is, you know, people say a calorie is not a calorie. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about heart disease, how does sugar play into the important, that in your diet? How does well, that play in? Unfortunately, many people get on these high fat diets, low fat diets, whatever. If you go on a real low fat diet, you're probably going to go on a high carbohydrate or high sugar diet because you only eat three things carbohydrates, fat, and then, uh, and then oils or, or uh, uh, the, uh, but you, it's really hard to eliminate just one thing from your diet. Mm -hmm. So we tell people to try to eat a balance of all three because it really comes down to calories. Let's talk about high blood pressure and what's the connection between elevated blood pressure and heart disease and why is it so important to keep your blood pressure under control? Well, the heart pump beats 100,000 times a day. It's a very unusual pump in that it pumps its own energy supply. You know, most pumps you plug into the wall or something, but this poor guy has to pump, and he doesn't get a, uh, a second off, he or she. You know, it's 100,000 times a day. So it has to pump. It has to pump against high pressure. That's more work it has to do, kind of like lifting weights. And that's okay for a few minutes, but not for all day long. So is that high blood pressure you had said when we were talking about how was heart disease diagnosed? Half of them are a heart attack. That's how you find out you've got heart disease. The rest of them, is it to diagnose because of high blood pressure? Is that how you figure out you've got heart disease? Uh, well, or someone gets symptoms. They may get a little chest discomfort. They may get some regular heartbeats. They may feel lightheaded or something. They go and see their physician or their caregiver, and they find the heart disease then with a stress test or some sort of other testing. I remember you saying that one of the last times that you were on uh, about how many more miles of blood vessels your heart has to pump your blood through if you uh, gain so much weight or have so yeah. much more fat. Is, one, pound, that? one pound of fat, five miles of blood vessels. So your heart pumps 100,000 times a day, one pound, an extra 500,000 miles. No, extra how many? Five, five miles. 500,000 miles. Oh, your heart because you multiplied it by 100,000. Right. So Did you hear that? I did. One I, pound of fat, <laughs> five more miles of blood vessels. Listen, I don't need uh, more reasons why I need to be losing no, weight. No, I didn't say <laughs> just for a second that you needed to lose weight. No, yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. But there might be this someone is in our audience. Yeah, yeah well, this is America's problem. But there is hope. There is hope. If fitness versus fatness. It's very clear, getting clear that fitness trumps fatness, meaning the people that are even ideal weight, if they're not fit, their right. heart, they don't get the benefits of being normal weight. You've got to get your heart in shape, get your body in shape. So that is more important than the weight that you are? It's the fitness level that you are? The fitness level. Wow. And uh, the, the way you do that is you sort of like interval training. That's the 30-second uh, intervals where you go all out yeah. and then uh, rest and then do it again when you can. If it's a time if you, thing. Yeah. We, who has time to go to the gym for an hour, three times, four times a week? And as far as activity is concerned for people who might have arthritis or, or whatever, do you like the elliptical? Ellipticals are great. It's not pounding like you do on the pavement or on a treadmill. Bikes are good, too. You like the bike, you like the treadmill, and uh, you like, like the interval run. training. Huh? Yeah, you, I just well, like to uh, run. Yeah, but you're young. You can still <laughs> run. Yeah, that's a good thing. Well, February is Heart um, uh, American Heart Month, and we've been talking with heart disease awareness and prevention specialist, Dr. Stephen Kopetsky. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Kopetsky.